Like the video where your waifu gets ghosted into obscurity. At least she's in Heroes. Why is she in Heroes? Part 1. White Clouds. Guardian Moon. Where the Goddess Dwells. Ah, forgettable stage for a forgettable girl. This is a match made in heaven. Who are we kidding? The goddess of this land lives in our head. There is no heaven, in this universe or ours. This level is poorly constructed. The layout presents almost no threat or engagement to the player, and feels more like a story map used as the vehicle to fully evolve your buy lift. The map starts simple. Your units are placed near two groups of enemies, implying you should split them up to dispatch of both groups at the same time. The numbers would be about even, making the encounters relatively challenging. But, just like we've seen before in Chapter 2, there is no incentive to do so. The enemies are spread out enough to where your full squad can focus fire on one faction and be ready to take down the next instantly. There are no green units to protect, or any other time-based side objectives to draw the player's attention multiple directions. The only thing they have is this chest, which, good job, they don't have a guy standing right next to the chest with a key to drop. Now I'm forced to go to the marketplace and buy as many keys as I could ever need for $2. Why are chests still in the game? I like that they're starting to mix demonic beasts with regular units more and the use of the giant forest can be interesting. It lets you fight the two demonic beasts at the center head on by giving you a void advantage since they are too big to get the bonus of the forest tiles. But the limited movement of the forest tiles makes it harder for everyone to get a hit in and lines you up for their special attacks. It's a neat little way to fight them that's different than the norm, even if it feels worse than the usual strategy of surround them all, don't let a single one escape, but still, nothing is really threatening. The groups are too small and get easily overwhelmed by the blob formation the game failed to incentivize the players to split up from. The enemy reinforcements stagger in too slowly, and the bosses... Wowie. Wowie zowie. Goodness gracious, my word. Cheese and crackers. Diddly doodly daddly. What the f- Fuck. Now, bosses are a strange topic in Fire Emblem that I want to save for its own video when I finish gathering all my thoughts on the topic. But here's the short version. Old bosses are usually giant damage sponges with good stat blocks, sitting on seized tiles. They're immobile and ready to be chipped down for experience, but they get annoying when trying to clear the map with a low turn count. New bosses have decent stats with lots of skills, and tend to move around the map to stop players from grinding experience. But the skills don't make up for the difference of just good stats, and can easily be overwhelmed by how many options the players are given. Basically, these bosses suck. Coronia gets bodied by gambits. She may be faster than most of your units, but she's sitting in the middle of the map. You can just body her with numbers. Solon is a frail old man who can easily get one-rounded. In fact, he probably did two chapters ago. The bosses in this game beyond the first few Death Knight encounters are mostly non-threatening. Any worries of crits or shenanigans can be nullified by Divine Pulse. Boring objectives, uninspiring enemy formations that don't make you think, and bosses made of plastic. Two? Three? Three out of ten.